Hey guys, so today's guest is Palmer Kippola. This lady is amazing. If you want to know anything about autoimmunity or honestly just to get educated on health, this is such a tremendous episode. She is the author of Beat Autoimmune, The Six Keys to Reverse Your Condition and Reclaim Your Health. It has a foreword by Dr. Mark Hyman, which is amazing. Um, She is amazing. Her story is amazing. She's not just a little bit into this autoimmune journey. She um, was battling autoimmunity MS. Actually, she was told she had MS um, and was battling that for 26 years going on this journey of healing. And you're just going to knock your socks off when she tells you what finally worked. Like she is glowing. She looks amazing. She has zero symptoms of MS, hasn't for years. And she's going to tell you what actually led into that healing. It is so good. It's so good. I can't wait for you to hear from her. Like I'm like team Palmer all the way. <laughs> um, so anyway, her website, if you want to find out more is Palmer Kippola.com. It's K I. So Palmer is P A L M E R. And then it's K I P P O L A.com. Um, she has a beat autoimmune Academy. It's a membership site where you can have a community of people who are also overcoming autoimmunity. Um, she coaches on that. She works with a functional medicine doctor and she herself is a functional medicine certified health coach. Um, she's also a speaker. And of course the author of this amazing book, um, again, it's beat autoimmune. I'll link it in the, in the show notes. Um, but she's going to knock your socks off on the autoimmunity thing. It's so good, both on the mental spiritual level and also on the physical level. And it's really simple to answer that she's bringing to the table. So uh, we'll go ahead and get right into it. Here is Palmer Kippola. Hey everyone, I'm super excited to talk with Palmer Kippola today. And I'm if you're not watching on YouTube, you're missing out. You should watch me on YouTube, but you can listen to me too. But we've got, I've got a copy of her book here I'm holding up and it's called Beat Autoimmune, The Six Keys to Reverse Your Condition and Reclaim Your Health. I can't wait for you to hear Palmer's story. I'm just, I, if you don't mind, I would love you tell it so beautifully too. And I, I, before you do though, I just have to say like autoimmunity is something that so many people it's epidemic levels. Honestly, I don't know what, maybe you have stats on that, but it's, I mean, it is crazy, crazy high levels of, um, it's, it's common. It's common now. Like I, I can't tell you how many people come to me and they have autoimmune conditions and it's kind of this big, like messy, like, I don't know, I have some sort of autoimmune something. It could be this, it could be that, it could be this, it could be that. And we want to put all these crazy labels on it. <laughs> um, and I just love for you. I would love for you to share your journey here because it is like unbelievably powerful. So do you mind? Sharing? Oh, I will dive right in. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tara. It is just a pleasure and honor to be with you. And you hit it on the head just to start with, it's said that maybe 80 million Americans are dealing with autoimmunity. There it is. And 50 years ago, nobody had ever heard of this. Wow. I am happy (laughs) to start with my story because I have to take you back a few years in time because I was 19 years old, happy, healthy, well-adjusted young woman, home from college after my freshman year. And the future looked bright. It looked promising. I didn't know what I was going to do, but you know, whatever it held, it was going to be a good future. Right. And I'm working a summer job as a hostess in a restaurant. And one morning I wake up and the soles of my feet are all tingly, that pins and needles feeling like you've slept on a limb. And it's just weird. And you shake your feet, but the blood didn't rush back. And I thought this will just go away. So off I went to work, but that creepy tingling just crept up my legs like a vine. And by noon, it reached my knees and it didn't go away. So I knew something was wrong. I called my mom and dad. They called the family physician who said, get her over to the neurologist at UCLA today. So that's what we did. And we sat in that neurologist's office, just not knowing what was going on. And she did, I'm not joking, a five minute, maybe six minute cursory exam that, you know, fingers to the nose, you walk heel toe, heel toe. And she said, I am 99% certain you have MS, multiple sclerosis. And if I'm right, there is nothing you can do except take medication. And I, we had never heard of MS. We th- Remember, I'm 19. This is the mid 80s. I'm dating myself here a little bit, but I, there's no internet. There's no, we had never heard of this before. And I learned later that she pulled my parents aside and said, you better get ready because she's going to be in a wheelchair and you're going to need to figure out how life is going to be. Sheesh. So we got in the car and we're just no information, no hope, blindsided and don't know what we're going to do. And by that night, 
when we get home and by nighttime, the tingling had gone all the way to my collarbones. And by the time we crawled in bed, every part of my body that had been tingling went completely numb. And Tara, I would stay numb for a full six weeks. It was absolutely terrifying. It was your body was just (sighs) freaking out. It was freaking out. And this Mm -hmm. is, this is not usual as you know, with mm-hmm. your clients and people with autoimmunity, usually you have some inkling right. that something is going on and brewing under, you know, things are bubbling up right. and then they hit the surface. And I, I, this came right out of the blue. And wow. I am enormously grateful that my parents were absolute rocks. My dad was like, honey, you're going to beat this thing, which is why the book is called Beat Autoimmune. Mm. And my mom would cry with me and empathize. And we were planning for my life to go to school if I could in a wheelchair, right? This was what what was going to happen. We had no idea. Um, and some friends weren't too scared off and can't, came by and brought me gifts. What would friends bring cookies and books and so forth? But this one friend brought a gift that I didn't realize until connect the dots backwards, right? That she brought a gift. And she asked this question, Palmer, why do you think you got the MS? <laughs> Whoa, what do, you, what do you mean? Why do I think I got the MS? Are you, are you implying that I brought this on myself? Wait a minute. I didn't have anywhere to go because I had installed myself on the living room couch for those six weeks. And I'm just lying there watching the summer Olympics, which were going on 1984 LA, nothing to do except chew on that question. Mm -hmm. And I have to take you back a little bit farther in time because it hit me in a flash of insight. So I'm 19 years old. I'm lying on the couch going, why did I get the MS? An image flashes into my mind and I am three years old, maybe four. Oh, I'm no joke. And I am standing up to my dad in the hallway. He's yelling at my mom, calling her names. She's shut herself behind the bedroom door. And he's not happy the fact that she's fat. And I am standing up to my dad with my little dukes up. You call my mom names and I'll sock your lights out or whatever, you know, the words might be. Mm -hmm. I had become a child warrior. I had become Mm -hmm. totally hypervigilant. And I believed in that moment, and I have no, my background is not in biology and and so forth, but in that flash of insight, I was like, oh, this must be my immune system, which is supposed to protect me from things. It's so ready for a fight and to defend that it's going to create friendly fire and turn the attack against me. And so that initial hypothesis that chronic stress was at the root of the MS still rings true for me today, even though I know there's more to the story. We're going to talk about it, but mm-hmm. that was just boom, download. It's wow. the stress. I love that your intuition, your higher self gave you that you, hold on, let's back up because first I love, I love this friend that came and asked that because that is like so taboo. It's like, are you serious? Are you, you're implying, I'm a victim. I'm a victim here. And you're implying that I actually have some sort of self accountability here, which was like, the best thing that could ever happen. She like pulled you straight out of victim mode and said, hold on, let me take a look at it. What could I possibly have had happen in my life that led to this thing? And then the fact that your intuition was like, here you go, here you go. This is it. Here's the answer. That's so freaking beautiful. Okay. Continue, continue on. Let's see, let's hear where you went from there. So we have learned so much about stress in the intervening years. And we'll dig into this Mm -hmm. because it is a huge part of the healing journey, but let me just close out with this, that I am very grateful that I had relapsing remitting MS, meaning the symptoms went away in the nick of time for me to be able to go back to college for my sophomore year. Mm. It would take a full two years for the numbness to go away, but I was well enough to go back to school. And off I went on a 26 year journey of relapsing remitting MS. Oh, wow. 26 years. So remember, there's no internet. There are no books on the subject. It is me, myself, and I. And over the course of those 26 years, I saw six neurologists, each of whom said the same exact thing. Wow. Nothing you can do except take medication. Right. But on the other shoulder, I had my dad. And here's the crazy thing. Like on the one hand, he's sort of like, I was in a triangle, right? Because it was just me as an only child, mom and dad. So he was the aggressor, mom was the victim, and I was the defender and protector. Wow. So in the one part of the story, my dad's the aggressor. On the other hand, 
he had been a fighter pilot. His way, it might have been the right way, and we might have butted heads quite a bit. But I have to tell you, he was the one that was there to motivate me and keep telling me, honey, you can beat this thing. You can beat this thing. So on one shoulder, I had the doctors, nothing you can do. You can beat this thing. So I listened to my dad and I kept trying things. And so the first thing I did, not the very first thing, because I didn't have the level of self-awareness. I went back to school. We had a a long period of denial and so forth. Mm. But once I remembered that it was the stress that got me into this mess, I needed to learn how to relax. Mm -hmm. So I started doing yoga in 1987 and I started meditating in the early nineties. And Tara, I noticed that when I was stressed out, when I had exams at school or later in the workforce or conflict at home, almost immediately within the week, I would start to experience more symptoms. And I had the slew of them. In fact, I have this one story. Uh, I was working in the corporate world for about 20 years. And I was doing something that I didn't love. I wasn't passionate about in New Jersey. And I went off on this super relaxing vacation to the Caribbean and came back to the office and got under those fluorescent lights. And the moment I hit those fluorescent lights, blindness in both eyes, searing pain of optic neuritis. And it would take three visits to an emergency room to finally get diagnosed with it. But I mean, clearly... Like the universe keeps giving me signs. Something is way out of balance here. Pay attention. And if you don't, the messages are going to get louder. Yeah, always. Right? 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 (laughs) But conversely, when I relaxed, when I actually did the yoga and when I did the breath work and when I left it all on the mat and let it go, I had this ebb of, of symptoms. The tingling reduced. The pain around my stomach went away. It was like night and day. So it was a huge cause and effect was really, really super clear with stress reduction techniques. That was my very first experiment. And that was, it's something that I still emphasize and prioritize to this day. That was my first experiment. Y'all like continue with other experiments? Yeah, okay. I I just have to say real quick. I want to back up real quick to um the 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 thing you said about your dad and 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 this story of you being this little girl like you're gonna like defend your mom. I love this story because it's diving into relative trauma is what I like to call it. So like sometimes I think we think that oh if if you if your dad didn't ble- beat you to a bloody pulp and molest you and you know had this horrible crazy like movie trauma then then it wasn't trauma but being able to look at this and understand your response trauma can be relative trauma I've I've worked through trauma with clients where their mom told them chronically growing up like oh sweetheart you're so pretty but if you just lost five more pounds you look great that's trauma totally. that can be that the that where it makes your mind go and your stress response Response go. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be something out of a lifetime movie. It That's could right. be just something as simple as like you, your internalization, your stress response was, I have to fight. I have to defend. I actually have to be watching all the time. And I love that story. I also love, honestly, the humanity of it and your ability to recognize in your dad he was an imperfect person. He had some stuff going on. It caused you to have some, some, some stress response issues, but it doesn't mean he's a bad person. He's a villain. He's a, it's just recognizing humanity, recognizing the human experience. He also had a lot of good qualities that helped you on your journey too. And I totally. love that because it shows honestly the work that you've done because you're not in victim mode about it. You're not like my dad did this and that's why I was messed up. You probably like wouldn't be as healed <laughs> if you hadn't gotten up. You're just like this. I see it now. Nobody's the bad guy. Let's just work through what stress response I had to that, be able to understand that and move past it. So anyway, I just wanted to make a note on that because I think it's so, such a great story for all of us to learn from and look at in our, in ourselves. That is so beautifully captured. Thank you, Tara. I love that. Um, Yeah, it is complex. And the thing is that I work with women all the time who want, seek to heal from autoimmunity. And we typically start with mindset and food. Yeah, but I yeah. started w- with addressing the stress and the trauma. Mm-hmm. And I'll just, if I can add one thing to what you said, I would say that I call it a stress reaction mm-hmm. versus mm-hmm. a relaxation response. Love because it. honestly, Love it. we just get into our primitive monkey brain. Yes. And we have no control over that until Love it. we learn to manage and just get control of it. So it had control of me for many, many years. 
but doing that forgiveness work, doing, going to the therapist, doing the yoga, doing the meditation, that is, that is a huge path out. And, and as you see with all of your clients, as we discussed, this is universal. I have not seen anyone with autoimmunity who is not suffering from some level of trauma, whether it's capital T trauma, you know, car crash, Mm -hmm. accident, those are very rare, but these little T's, the little T trauma, yep. Yep. the insidious things that happen over time, yep. the neglect, yep. the verbal abuse, you know, you don't see any wounds, you don't see any visible scars, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. man, oh man. Mm-hmm. It's all harboring in there. And I love it. You're really getting into like the energetic body versus the physical body. And we, I mean, I, I definitely am a fan of this way of thinking. I 100% believe that our, the blockages in our spirit and our energetic bodies manifest in our physical bodies. Absolutely. I've just seen it over and over um, with uh, somebody that I was interviewing. I feel so bad. I can't remember who it was, but it was somebody who deals with autoimmunity. I think it might've been Dr. Gary Forsman here on my podcast, but he was saying that um, autoimmunity is is emotional purely. <laughs> and it, there is a there is a physiological side of it too which we're going to sure. get to with you in a minute, but he's like that is the beginning of all autoimmune conditions is is emotional pain. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. "Dang, thank you for saying that." <laughs> and it's not limited to autoimmune. I mean, cancer yeah. integrative cancer doctors True. say the issues are in the tissues and they're Oof. speaking about buried emotional Oof. pain. Oof. Love. So this is an opportunity to find freedom. So I, I just, I am so grateful that I had that opportunity, that family friend who asked that question, why? Because that's the question that I still ask of myself and yeah. all of my clients. I mean, it's the only way out is to really dig in yep. and ask those questions. Yeah. So. Wow. Absolutely. Okay. So, so your journey, so now we're, we're deeper into your rec, the universe is getting louder yes. and where, where do you go from here? So where we go is that <laughs> in those 26 years, which I will condense, I tried a lot of different things. Um, everything in the stress area from biofeedback, neurofeedback, counseling, therapy, it, and, and my point here is what works is the one that you will do and the one <laughs> that you will stick to and the yes. one that you will commit to. Okay. Beautiful. So that's stress. The next thing I tried was food. I mean, I just hypothesized food must have something to do with this. And when I went to the public library in Santa Monica, all I could find was the, sw- the swank MS diet book that purported the best diet for MS is low fat vegetarian. I'm oh, here to say nothing could be farther from the truth. I tried that and I had this issue of experiencing a little bit of tummy trouble after eating, not like run to the bathroom trouble, but just some gurgling, you know, ongoing constipation. And when I added more healthy whole grains, my tummy troubles got worse. Oh, for sure. Right. (laughs) But I had no, I didn't put it together. I didn't know that my stomach, my tummy pains had anything to do with the MS. And oh, by the way, I thought what I was experiencing was normal. Wow. 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 I wow. tried vegan, vegetarian, low fat, you name it. Like right. I did this for a long time and I will just fast forward to 2010 because by this time I have learned enough about nutrition to know that hmm, maybe something I'm eating is causing these tummy trouble. Maybe I should go see a nutritionist. I found a functional medicine nutritionist and she did a bunch of tests on me. And lo and behold, we found out that I had non-celiac gluten sensitivity, meaning I didn't have celiac disease, but I was sensitive to gluten. And I had been eating it with every meal, the cereal for breakfast, sandwiches for lunch, pasta, pizza, sometimes beer, steady stream inflaming my gut. She led me through this gut healing exercise of taking the inflammatory stuff out for 30 days, healing my gut. Within one week, I stopped having tummy troubles. I was like, And I noticed it, this, I don't feel bloated anymore. I don't feel these gurgles within one month. I stopped having any and all MS symptoms ever again. Oh my gosh. A month. Full stop. One month. And I'm really quick to add that I'm not suggesting to anybody out there that I am saying, you know, just remove the gluten and you're done. I quit my day job to study how in the world this was possible. Yeah. I will say, I wonder would I've had the same response had I not already been dealing with the stress reduction? Totally, totally. 
Uh, right? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's got to be both. It's layers. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got to be both. Yeah. I, I'm curious about that going back. I definitely want to talk about this uh, gluten thing, but going back to your, the stress response, the one that works is the one that you'll do. What was that for you? It was the meditation and the yoga. And I, I just have, I still have a daily meditation practice to this day. Beautiful. Um, Yeah. Me too. Life-changing. It's life-changing. Absolutely life-changing and, and breathing. I mean, like simple breathing exercises and gratitude. I mean, I can keep going, but yeah, me too. (laughs) Right. I mean, yep. Every day it's, it's all additive. So we take things out of the bucket and we put the good stuff in and we can talk about that too. But so that was my Eureka experiment. Um, the gluten removal, right? Yeah. That was wow. Really and, and I want to add, you know, I, I share this sometimes. I think it's important for listeners to know I was so excited by this because it was so like, what? I don't feel like I'm plugged into a wall anymore moments. I decided to make an appointment with my neurologist and let him know. Yeah. Good. Right. And walk back in, <laughs> Hey doc, I don't feel like I'm plugged into a wall. I can walk without feeling like my legs are underwater. This is amazing. Amazing. And he says to me, Palmer, your MS was probably benign and gluten sensitivity is a fad. Wow. I'd like you to to go on medication. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 Totally dismissed. Totally. Fueled my fire to go home. Yes. This doesn't make any sense to me at all. Right. Yeah. Wow. Patriarchal hierarchical thing. Like, huh? So I quit my day job at this point. I'm in the corporate world. I'm, I'm a VP of sales for a technology company. I'm like, Nope, I'm studying this. Amazing. I had all these experts tell me there was nothing I could do. And lo and behold, this experience, my felt experience was totally different yeah. And that's when I, I landed on this super exciting science that is so empowering. Yeah. And then I dug deeper into all the root causes and that's how this Palmer, worked. this is so incredible because like the fact that when you said, I had no idea that my gut issues were related, like, and I, that makes sense. Cause back then nobody, nobody was talking about that. Nobody knew that. And like the, I, even with, when we're looking at like depression, anxiety, um, a lot of these cognitive symptoms and people will have these horrible gut issues and they don't know that those two are connected. That is atrocious. That's appalling to me. I'm like, no one told you you're, I'm like, do you think you might have a gluten intolerance? Oh yeah. I'm pretty, pretty sure. Pretty sure. Do you think you might have a dairy lactose intolerance? Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure. And they're continuing to eat these things and then go get like antidepressants and (gasps) they want the pill. They want one pill for the right. And they want to continue their lifestyle. Right. So the fact that this isn't commonplace, that still today, right now, like you and I can be sitting here on this podcast and you're saying, look at this for 26 years, nothing worked. The medical system told me to just be on a pill and I was just going to be in a freaking wheelchair. And I, I had it yeah. like, in my opinion, I'm like, you didn't have MS, you had gluten intolerance that's <laughs> and right. a lot of that's stress right. and trauma. That's right. Like, that's right. <laughs> like, it's so crazy to me that this isn't out there enough. Like, I'm just like, how can we flan- faint, uh, flame, this fire bigger so more yes. people can hear this message and not yeah. have to live like that. Like right. there's plenty of other things you can eat. Right. Your <laughs> book, your book, my book and your podcast is, yeah. is what people, I mean, we're, it's ripple effects of, you know, we have to, people need to know message. people need to know. I, yeah. I just got angry and that anger fueled me because how dare you tell me there's nothing I could do, but can I put a bow on the story? Because <laughs> yeah. I really, I really want to end. I want to like come back to the neurologist <laughs> yes. for a minute. Yeah. So fast forward nine years and I'm completely symptom free and wow. I haven't seen this guy in nine years. And I decide, you know what? I should get another MRI. Just, you know, I'd had dozens over the years, whatever. I should go back and get another MRI. See what this guy, see if his thinking has evolved. There was a study that came out in 2015 that shows that le- that gluten creates a, a leaky gut in anyone who eats it. That's Alessio Fasano from Harvard Medical School. Really? Anyone who eats it. So if you have the, the tendencies toward autoimmunity, or if you have an autoimmune condition and you're still eating gluten, it creates a leaky gut and that's the pathway to autoimmunity. Right. So it's like the biggest gift you can give yourself is to take it out. So I... I'm mixing a whole bunch of things up, but I went back to the neurologist's office. 
He's like, Palmer, what are you doing here? I'm not, not expecting to see you. And I said, you know, I'm just curious, you know, I, I'm wondering what you think now. I mean, we have science has, has evolved. And I didn't do it in a snarky kind of way. I really was, I went in with curiosity and I said, and frankly, you know, I think it's a good idea to get another MRI. And he looked at me and he said, you know what, kind of with his tail between his legs. Now we know that gluten sensitivity is real. Wow. He said this, this is a medical doctor, neurologist. He said, and I'm positive that at least 30% of my patients are sensitive to gluten 10 years later. Right. Wow. Really? So do you educate them? No, only if they ask. What? Why? <laughs> because it's no joke because it's too hard. Really? Because that was the answer. <gasps> oh. And then he said, but you know, I can't give you my patient list, but I can refer people to you. That's never happened. But here's the, uh. the bow on my story. He said, I think it's a good idea that you get the MRI and we ought to back the next day. And the next day I'm sitting in his office side by side and he's, he's pointing out the films from the last one, um, you know, 2000 something five, maybe, and looking compared to this one and, and the technology is just vastly improved. So it's hard to do an exact before and after. So I'm asking him, please tell me exactly what you see in this new one. What's going on here? And he said, Palmer, your lesions have faded or they've disappeared. This couldn't be a better story. Like in neurology, this just doesn't happen. There's wow. nothing better that we can than we can expect to see. Now it shows that there's evidence that MS was there. It shows the pattern of Dawson finger, which is a particular formation of lesions in the brain, but it shows evidence that the lesions are gone or have faded. And that was just, you know, having him say wow. this couldn't be a better story. It felt like some level of vindication, but mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. you know, I yeah. Thought, yeah. Thank, thank you for doing the work. Thank you for quitting your VP of sales job to get this out there. Thank you for showing up, becoming an entrepreneur, sharing your story because there's, I'm so, so the body, we already know, like, let's look at on a skin level. We can look on the outside. Can your skin heal itself? Absolutely. If you keep pouring acid on an open wound, can it heal itself? No, it cannot. It can't <laughs> fight that. And it's like we're doing that to the inside of our bodies when we're eating these things that are inflaming our bodies over and over and over. And what's sad is people don't even know. Like you were saying, like you thought everyone had like gut discomfort. You thought that was a normal totally. part of human experience because you had had it your whole life. whole life. Yeah. So it's like the fact that people don't know that is criminal. And you know, I, I did, I admit, I felt anger surge up in me when you were telling that story <laughs> because I'm like, it's too hard. Like, you know, what can he, and I was like, well, he's just being lazy and he just wants to give a pill and it's too hard for him. <laughs> and I was like, anyway, I've, I've started feeling those feelings come up, but I'm like, you know what? The only way we can't fight fire with fire. Okay. The only thing that we can do is bring answers and the old archaic ways will just fall away themselves. That's right. That's right? And so I thought, you know, I have a friend that had a very similar story to you. Um, she, we were in our early twenties, both little stay at home moms. And she called me one day in tears and she's like, Tara, like, I don't know what's wrong with me. My hands and my feet are tingling like crazy. Like I'm super scared. Can you watch my kids? I got to go to the emergency room. What's going on? Same story. Um, first she was diagnosed with MS. Then they switched it to Lyme disease. Then she was on um, IV drips for like a month at a time for these uh, uh, antibiotics. Nothing was working. I actually lost touch with her. I don't know what happened with her story. We moved away, but I'm like, gosh, I wonder because she was very healthy. First of all, super proponent of organic eating, but lots of gluten, lots of like wow. breads and, you know, all the, the healthy gluten diet. And um, I'm like, God, I got to find her. <laughs> I got to see yes. where she's gone on her journey. Yeah. That's so inspiring. And the other thing I just wanted to point out um, was like, I feel like, you know, the whole too hard thing. Do you feel like, like there's almost like people want to turn away and not look at maybe I have a gluten or dairy sensitivity because I don't, I don't really don't want to have to be in a position where I give up those foods. Like, do you feel like there's people like that turn a blind eye at that? 100%. 
And 100%. So what would you say to them on that? You know, it's a, it's a choice at this point. And I, you, we can only serve people who are ready to be helped and receptive, open-minded to the message. And there is some reason that being in pain or having an illness can actually be beneficial because there's something we get from being in that place, that position, you know? Yeah. Um, so I find that, you know, people typically, and this is why prevention is so hard, right? Yeah. Because people, unless you are in enough pain yeah, and, or unless you're curious enough to want to try to change, right. you're not going to. That's um, just my yep. observation, right? So mm-hmm. it's, and I don't mean to be so black and white about it, but I've, I've struggled a long time with this, but as I imagine you have family and friends and people that you would love to be able to help and it just falls on deaf ears, right? And yeah. even people who say they want to work with me and they're still like having a sandwich. I mean, and, and I need to do a, obviously a better job of screening people who are really, truly what ready to do the work, but it's really a spectrum. And yeah. there's no blame. It's right. just, but as soon Options. as you know, but here's the thing, like, I feel like I'm here just to pr- provide the science, the stories and the strategies. And if you want to hear that, great. And if not, when you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Any major changes in my life that have been like astronomical <laughs> have been sourced out of like, I can't, there's literally no other option now, <laughs> but right. I would say for anybody listening, like, so I, I mean, I grew up very standard American diet, like as much as it gets, I mean, even as an adult, I was eating fast food and ramen noodles and grilled cheeses with my kids on white bread and craft macaroni and cheese. I mean, like all of the, ba- all of this stuff, you know? Um, and I milk, we, I used to, drink the, you know, Costco gallons of milk. Like it was nobody's business. I living off that stuff. And like to me and cheese, cheese is like one of my favorite foods. And so for me going now, I almost never eat dairy or gluten. Very rarely, little teeny bit here and there. Um, for me, like to go to a place where, I mean, I would say pretty much I don't eat them. It would be a rare occasion. So to go from that lifestyle to, I never eat those things. I'm telling you, you can. And my my message is that there are so many replacements. You won't even miss it once you get curious and start exploring. Like I, I, you know, last two nights ago, I made homemade pizza for my kids on this like avocado crust that like, I'm like, this is actually so much easier than making pizza dough or buying pizza. Like it's literally, it's already in my house. I didn't have to go anywhere. I just popped it in the oven and threw some toppings on it and it was delicious, you know? So there are, there are ways that you can easily, in my opinion, pretty easily get past these things. You just find substitutes of other foods that you love and you focus on foods that you love that don't have it. And you forget about the, the gluten and the dairy, right? So it's really, it's honestly, it's not that hard. You just have to focus on finding new joy, new sources of joy in your eating and you're good. (laughs) So, um, uh, now in your, in your coaching, your, your coaching that you do with people with autoimmunity, you said it's it's basically twofold of your experience of what worked of mindset and and nutrition, correct? Well, those are starting points. Starting I mean, points. Okay, yeah. Could you points. tell us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, once I discovered epigenetics, which is the science mm-hmm. that shows us yep. that it's the environment that matters most, not your genes. Like my genes just didn't all of a sudden go off at 19. And right. no, 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 no. Right. It's like we all contain this toxin bucket I know you've heard this and people talk mm-hmm. about it yeah. that within us, and it's supposed to have some holes at the bottom that excrete things out the bottom and right. it can hold things, right? Yep. And all of us have different layers of what goes in there that is inflammatory. So I had the chronic stress. I then developed a sugar addiction. I developed candida as a result of that. And mm. oh, by the way, mm. mercury fillings as a result to, of all the sugar. So we're just seeing how it's layering. Yep. Up. Yep. I didn't find out until 2017 that I had chronic Lyme disease. And it was probably from going to college in Vermont where I'm romping around in the mountain club in my shorts, like an idiot, you know, my freshman year, yeah. because the sun was out, you know, I didn't know right. the difference between California and Vermont, but I was able to live completely. I'm able to live with this infection or this imbalance because I, the rest of the way that I live my life. 
So right. sometimes our buckets fill up to the top, right? And then when it hits a threshold, we develop a leaky gut. And right. that is how the autoimmune reaction starts to happen. And we need to do whatever we can. And healing is about removing things out of the bucket and healing and sealing our gut. And that's the path to reversal. And there's science behind this too. It's called the autoimmune equation. So that's the second piece of exciting science I found was also Alessio Fasano, who found it's not just genetics. We know that that's about five to 10% of the equation now. It used to be people thought it was 30 to 50%. Mm -mm. Even the CDC agrees only up to 10% of your health outcomes is genetic. 90% is our lifestyle, what we eat, drink, think, and do. Mm -hmm. So this was... This was my moment of like, oh my goodness, people need to know this. So then I studied full time. Well, what are those environmental factors that are causing our guts to become leaky to create this autoimmune cascade? Mm -hmm. And the the word that emerged from the categories that I had on my piece of paper was fights, which stands for food, infections, gut health, hormone balance, toxins, and stress. And I truly, truly am sorry that it did not spell the word peace because I am not like, I, not you don't me. want to be a warrior anymore. <laughs> right, right. I, I put down my sword and shield and I just want to, you know, it's all about balance, but you know, it resonated because of my dad telling me, honey, you can beat this thing. Yeah. So fights it is. And, and so we need to go through each one of those categories and yep. we do, we start with Beautiful. food, but then Beautiful. we do gut healing and, and there's a process for going through it. But I just wanted people to know what are all those categories that they can control. Beautiful. Yeah. And this is in her book, guys. So Be Autoimmune is the name of the book. I was reading through it. It's 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 amazing. It's very, very thorough. Um, I have to ask you a question though. It keeps popping up. So, you know, um, with, with the leaky gut stuff and gluten. So I know you, I'm sure you're familiar with the work of Dr. Zach Bush. Oh. Um, and so he was, he was here. I had the extreme honor of interviewing him um, once. And one thing that he said was that glyph, so glyphosate, he's like, it, is possible that you may not have a gluten intolerance. You have a glyphosate intolerance because totally. all of the gluten has been genetically modified and it's all been exposed to glyphosate. Yeah. Um, and so I was, you know, cause you hear these stories of people who go over to Europe and they eat gluten over there and they're totally fine. Do you have any experience with that? Do you, what's your research into that? Or do you have any thoughts on it? I, I totally agree with what Zach had to say. I think he is like the man when it comes to <laughs> yes. gut healing, he actually Seriously. reviewed the gut chapter of my book. So amazing deep, deep bows to Zach Bush. Yes. Um, and his and product, his product Re- ion biome is amazing by the way. I take it every day. Totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. So really it, it it is. And so I don't have any more science to add to that. Okay. People need to do their own experimentation. I mean, if, if I offer anything to the world, it's that you can do it. And you need to experiment for you. And if you feel like you can go to Italy and eat the pasta, yeah, I want you to live a full, rich life and have the best experiences. And there are people that don't have reactions. Unfortunately, now glyphosate, I think, is allowed to be sprayed in Europe too. Mm, So pretty soon, if not now, we already have this worldwide pandemic um, of of, glyphosate and atrazine, which by the way, Dr. Terry Walls, who is seen as an icon for healing her MS with food, she didn't get into the MS problem with food. She got into it growing up on a farm where her dad sprayed atrazine, which is one of the most powerful herbicides on the planet. Wow. And so that was part of her setup in any event. So yes, we are living in a toxic soup and it's up to each one of us to just just do what you can. You know, It can be overwhelming to think about all of the things that you need to be done, but it's just one thing at a time. Totally. Totally. One thing at a time is the best piece of advice ever. And I, I think, you know, I love this, uh, concept of the stress buckets. I hear Dr. Daniel Pompa talk about this a lot. And I, and many of people who have mentored with him and I love it because like, so, so many of us, we, like, what happens is in our pursuits for health, we think add more, let me add more stress, totally. you know? And I've taken, I, I took an entire week long certification where literally all we talked about every single day for five days was how to make sure that we as trainers, because I, I am a personal trainer also don't add stress to people who are already stressed out. Right. So, um, there's this like very big disconnect. I feel like we're still like really behind a little bit on main 
mainstream knowledge of how to get healthy. It's not like, hey, you need to go breathe and do yoga. People are like, yeah, right. I need to go crush it. I need to go crush myself down, add more stress to it. Um, and I'm going to earn my calories and I'm going to have this pizza afterward. I'm going to put my body through crap and then I'm going to inflame it more with this crappy food that I earned through my inflammatory exercise. And I'm never going to look at any of my emotional trauma and I'm good and I'm fine. And now we have 80 million people with autoimmunity. <laughs> yeah. So beautiful, um, beautiful summary. I mean, it's literally as simple as removing the bad stuff. And when I talk with mm -hmm. clients, I, I don't want to be negative about things, but honestly, the first part of healing is about removal. Yeah. Yes. It's about removal. I mean, right. we're treating our guts like garbage disposals, people. Right. Right. Like with, with antibiotics at the drop of a hat for a cold, save them for your life-saving you know, emergencies, but don't take them all the time. You know, it, right. we know that one week of antibiotics can set us back in terms totally. of our microbiome for a year. Totally. And it's like, it's like literally like drinking acid all every day. And then being like, can I have a, can I have a pill to help me with this? And it's like, stop drinking the acid. <laughs> stop, right. Just stop doing that thing. Yes. I am such a firm believer in this too, is like, what is inflaming you in the first place? That's it. If the you why. Get, the right. Why. And, and if you can get rid of that, then you may not need anything else. The body is amazingly able to heal itself once we remove the thing that's blocking it from healing itself. So yeah. Wow. And, said. and I have to say like, guys, if you're not watching on video, Palmer, you are like glowing. You keep like saying you're like, I'm like, you were an a, adult in the eighties. That's really shocking. Like you are just like, so <laughs> literally like your health is like glowing out of your skin, oh, which is so you. awesome to see when it's like, here was your prognosis of like, you're going to have to live with your parents the rest of your life and be in a wheelchair. You're this sickly, sickly individual. And now you're thriving. You're running your own business. You're glowing. You look so young. Like, it's so cool thank to you. see that. I mean, you are the fruits of your labor. And so anyway, thank you so much for, for sharing this with the world. I will do any, whatever you need, girl. Like, I'm like, whatever we can do to get this message out, I'm Aww. in. So you, you let us know. And if, if anybody's listening and you have somebody in your life that's dealing with autoimmunity, please share this episode with them. <laughs> so good. And um, I'll put a link to her book, Beat Autoimmune is the title um, in the show notes. So you guys can get it as well. And then if you, if they want to reach out to you about working with you or, you know, get a hold of you any, what do you recommend where do they start? So the website, palmerkipola.com, um, P-A-L-M-E-R-K-I-P-P-O-L-A.com is a good place to go. I, I'm also the founder of Beat Autoimmune Academy, which is an online membership and super caring community. I mean, this is a crazy time that we're cool. in and people want to be in community. So having that accountability and that motivation and support is awesome. So you can go to beatautoimmuneacademy.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Palmer. Yeah. I really, really appreciate you and your journey and your message. Mm. And you're so well-spoken about it. So you are definitely living in your purpose. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. It was just an honor to be with you. Can't wait to connect again.